Bank stocks have been one of the most devastated sectors in the entire market. It's a sector that I've been buying into because I see some value, but Steve Eisman is thinking in another direction. He thinks it's probably one of the worst things you could probably be buying right now. And I just want to give some insight, break this video down. The guy from the big short and actually share some insight on the recent earnings from JP Morgan. Look at some of the Canadian banks and where the value actually exists in this sector. This is one, this is the most anticipated recession that so far has never happened. And so people are chasing. It's starting to feel a little manic, but could go on long, quite a bit longer because as long as the economic data is okay, I don't see why people are going to sell their stocks. It's funny when an institutional investor says that, it's, that the thing that you got wrong was underestimating how much institutional investors have invested in the market. Yeah, this comes from money market funds, right? We talked about the insane amount of cash that's been sitting on the record amounts of cash sitting on the sidelines up to this point. And now people are starting to chase because this could really potentially be the first soft landing we've ever experienced in any real economic uh, turmoil, which is just, you know, history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. And this is a whole new set of rules here I've never really seen before. Were you also under invest? I mean, were you sort of bracing for something really terrible to happen? And do you still believe that it will happen? Or are you saying, you know, things actually look much better? Well, I think we came into the year fully invested. You know, we did better last year than the market because we were somewhat defensive. We're not quite as defensive as we were. But uh, like, I would admit that I'm surprised about how much the market has gone up this year. I really am. Are there shorts in the tech sector then if things look manic? I don't talk about individual stocks, <laughs> but thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the earnings, baby, get ready for those earnings coming up here. It's going to be a real dictator to what these tech stocks do. Sector itself. <laughs> um, I think it's too hard. Bubble. It's too hard. I mean, even stocks where I think the, the companies are not even going to last, the, you know, the correlations between all these companies that have very high revenue growth and negative earnings is almost one. So it's not really stock picking, it's like group picking. You know, last year those stocks were all down 75 to 90%. This year they're up like 40 to 50%. But you know, when you go from 160 to 10, and now you're 14, mm -hmm. looks good on a percentage basis, but it's not so good if you've owned it long term. Yeah, so <laughs> that's most YouTubers out there, financial education, all these guys that are like, oh, I'm up 50% this year, but they've been holding. Uh, the wicked highs and getting bankrupted last year on a lot of their positions. What kind of economy are you investing? What's the backdrop to your investment when it comes to, you know, wh what you expect the uh, economy to give you? Is it a recession? Is it a soft landing? And, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm agnostic about it. I mean, the data is still very, very be. strong. The Fed keeps raising rates. It hasn't had an impact. You know, until it has an impact, I'll just say we'll keep chugging along. So what are you chugging along with? In, uh, I mean, it's a combination of some tech, very little financials, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it, we're focusing on doing a lot of work on infrastructure because the amount of money that the government is pouring into it is almost unimaginable and it's going to last for at least 10 years. Tomorrow kicks off bank earnings. We're not going to play individual names, but banks are interesting here. And no, they're I'm not. Well, that's, not my, that's my point. So the regulation. See, I beg to differ just because bank stocks are so infrastructurally important. But this is coming from a Canadian perspective because I think the Canadian banks are more resilient. We're going to see that in a lot of these U.S. banks. But take a listen. It's coming. Capital requirements are going higher. The environment suggests they're not going to be, the earnings are not going to be nearly as robust as the valuations suggest. So I'm not saying short, long, but are banks important here? Because I don't think they're particularly interesting either. I don't think they're interesting and I don't think they're important. I mean, People own J.P. Morgan because they're hiding it. It is by far the best bank. Uh, I, the regionals are problematic because they keep losing their deposits and have to keep reducing their balance sheet. So I. If so look, he's not wrong with the regional banks, but with J.P. Morgan, I don't think people are necessarily just hiding out in it. J.P. Morgan actually posted incredible numbers. If you bought the stock any time in the last little bit, you're actually doing pretty well. Obviously, it's not you know touting to all time highs. It's definitely underperforming the S&P since it's all time high. But from a dividend play, a valuation play, if you were buying these dips, I think you're actually doing pretty well. For the regionals, I don't think earnings have bottomed. Um, and I wouldn't even think about buying them until I thought that they had. You know, you could traffic a little bit in the larger banks, but the problem is that uh, Michael Barr, who's vice chair of financial supervision, just said that he's going to raise capital requirements for the large banks by 20%, which would take ROEs down by 100 to 200 basis points. And there's an irony in this, by the way. All the problems that happened in the banks were in the mid-cap banks. The large banks, because of all the regulatory changes, were fine. So what do the regulators do? They go fight the last war, and they're raising capital requirements of the large banks. Uh, why? I mean, th there's absolutely no reason for it, but that's what they're doing.
So if you look at something like a JP Morgan trading at 10 times, uh, 10 times earnings, it, I mean, to me, it seems like it's discounting a lot of things like additional capital requirements and, you know, some maybe some other bank problem down the road and maybe the economy not doing so well. So it seems to me, I actually think it's attractive here. It is attractive, but it may be the only stock in the entire group that's attractive. I mean, if I see what I love here is that he flips because before he's like, oh, it's not who cares? People are hiding out in it. And then she's like, well, but, you know, the valuations, it's really, you know, taken into consideration. A lot of those things you're talking about, it's been trading pretty cheaply. Earnings are here. We'll take a look at them. But now he's like backpedaling. If I had to pick one stock where I would say the earnings estimates could probably go up, it would be JP Morgan. But I think every other bank probably in the country the estimates are going to go down i don't think he's wrong with the other regional banks i don't play all the banks i think they're actually a little scary to own but when you look at things like the big banks you look at paypal you look at the fact that they've been trading down so much and if we go into their earnings here as i've been saying you just can't deny companies that are growing right there there are staples to society they pay great yields and if you're just buying them for that you're not gonna get the same kind of tech growth but as part of your portfolio for income i just don't know how you go wrong with these right banks like i'm not buying bank etfs again we'll talk about some of these but look at jp morgan's revenue it's at an all-time high here 41 billion dollars for the six month ending 79 billion versus 61 billion in 2020 that's a 30 percent increase on an average share basis here what are we talking about or let's look at the basic diluted uh, eps was what uh four dollars 75 against what 277 in q2 of 2022 like these numbers are very great to be in a recessionary environment right you look at bank of america these companies incomparable have not been performing nearly as well we know that warren buffett also agrees here and he sold off bank of america and he's again not wrong when it comes to these regional banks i wouldn't say Citigroup's a regional bank but these ones have definitely been underperforming i think we're getting some earnings on these like us bank another one that's had a lot of focus on it that warren buffett did own scaled down pretty dramatically but you kind of just got to position yourself here and ask yourself you know do you understand the regulatory environment well enough like steve eisman does to say that you shouldn't be owning these at this discounted level has that been priced into the market here because these things are trading at pandemic level lows like if there was ever a time to buy them and do your homework now is the time but i avoid these kind of banks i as a dividend payer i just want to go to where the regulations make a little bit more sense i have a little bit more of a feel out for the economy that's canada right i mean you look at td bank i think this thing's been trading at a favorable discount um i just don't see these getting like just devastated at all anymore and getting these yields we haven't seen in quite some time I would, I just can't help but buy them here. That's why I've been buying them, right? You look at TD's earnings. Again, one of the banks that's been seeing, again, record revenue growth. It'll be need to see what the next earnings period look like because you have to pay attention to the provision for credit losses. That's the only thing really holding these banks back right now because, again, fear of, you know, deteriorating uh, credit quality and a lot of mortgages credit cards because as obviously you know those renewals come up and people have to make higher payments against their income the bank gets a little more shaky about it if they can sustain those but i've always kept saying that the real estate market for as long as it sustains and stays strong if people can't afford their mortgage they put it up for sale there seems to be people there to buy it that stabilizes a lot of these these mortgage things along with these uh, loan loss provisions we're seeing the same thing with royal bank you know you got royal bank here uh, actually rallying back pretty nicely this is one of my biggest positions in any bank um i just as as canada's largest company as one of the monopolies uh in the system i just again when they're getting record customer acquisition in this exploding market again total revenue uh for this isn't an all-time high here from last quarter a uh, year over year though the record revenue is right from 24 billion to 28 billion uh for the six month year you know they're sitting at 13.52 which is still above q2 of 2022 at 11.2 billion provision for credit losses guys again those have been going up which is what makes the earnings look like they're deteriorating in my bet my continuation to think is that eventually they're going to stop putting provisions for credit losses aside and we're going to get back to a place of sustainability with these companies and some of this revenue will start baking into the eps that is just my opinion that is just my bet and i'd always love uh, you know an adverse opinion i'd love to know what you guys think about it in that comment section below